in my opinion, I feel like that listing appointment is a job interview. You know what it's like to prepare for a job interview. It's days of making sure you're ready, what questions are going to be asked in general, what questions might they ask about you specifically. In my mind, if there is research that you can do to know about that property or those sellers and the situation that they're in, there is no excuse for taking the time to research that and being ready. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Agent Power Huddle. For those tuning in around the country, it's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. 8 a.m. on the West Coast. Let's get started. A, a big shout out to Jesse for putting together this week the listing presentation focus for this week. So we are going to be diving in onto the listing presentation. Uh, Jesse had called and said, would you be willing to share what you do? And a couple of thoughts go through my head at that point. I like, well, I'm not sure I would recommend what I do to everybody. I'm sure there's a few takeaways. So it wouldn't be one I'd raise my hand and say, yeah, do what I do. May not work for you, but it, we found a way to make it work for us. And then the other thought is, well, gosh, why would I, after 21 years in the business, why would we take and share all of our secrets and our techniques and our process? Why would we do that? Share that with the world. It's being recorded. People can go back and watch. But over the last 20 years, I have had many experienced brokers and mentors help me in my journey to where I am. And so we are happy to share some of what helps our team be successful. We are Hank's Realty Group. My name is Matthew Hanks. I'm in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We're in a spot just west of Charlotte called Gaston County, just across the river near the airport. And so uh, grown up here, spent the most of my life here and know the area well, know a lot of people here, and that really helps us on the listing side. But why are we focused on listings? Talking about listings this week. Um, particularly right now with all of the news about buyer agency commissions that are up in the air, what's going to happen with the buyer side of things. It is really nice to be able to take control of the market by controlling the inventory and bringing in your own products to sell and letting the entire rest of the real estate community out there who is working with buyers, let them fight that battle about the commissions <laughs> when and if they're going to be paid. Because if you're the listing agent, Guess what? You control the process. You control the narrative, the process, the the, uh, the overall uh, plan with the sellers and what the commission is going to be, and it puts you in the driver's seat. So, particularly this time of year, springtime, going into the summertime, get the listings, stack the inventory as high as you can. The buyers are going to be coming out. Interest rates are about to tick up, is what everybody's saying, and it brings them out even more. The time is right to bring on the listings. So. If you're not already focused on listings in your business, let that be an encouragement to you that it would be a very wise move. Those who list will last in this business. So I want to encourage everybody to ask questions as we go. Um, if the, the feature about raising a hand or getting my attention, speak up, whatever, please ask questions. Feel free to during this. Otherwise, it's just me doing an awful lot of talking and it starts feeling like an on-stage TED talk or something, I would much rather this be collaborative and making sure I'm addressing exactly the concerns and the questions that you all have in this market with where we are right now. We have more and more joining on the call. So I talked a little bit about why listings. I'm going to share with you before we talk about the listing appointment, but before you get to the listing appointment, so much of your success is to whether or not you have a successful appointment or successfully obtain that listing is what preparation is done prior. So before I talk about what happens when you get to the house, to the property for the appointment, I want to talk about prior because there's so much that you can do. In my opinion, of course, I'm eight years military experience. So, you know, I've, my, my mind operates a certain way. I feel like that listing appointment is a job interview. And for those of you who are in the workplace before you were into real estate and self-employed and the whole bit, you know what it's like to prepare for a job interview. It's, it's days of making sure you're ready, what questions are going to be asked in general, what questions might they ask about you specifically, what about when they say, well, you know, tell us why would you want to interview with this, 
w- with this firm at this time. You've already done your research about that company, about the position. You better have looked at their website, checked them out on a stock exchange, know what their strategic objectives are, the whole bit. And so in my mind, if there is research that you can do to know about that property, let's say the property specifically, or those sellers and the situation that they're in, there is no excuse for taking the time to research that and being ready. And almost every appointment we go on, there will be some type of comment that the sellers will make. Wow, you guys really did your research here and your homework before you showed up. Well, the reason why is because I've been on a lot of appointments before where I didn't and and didn't get the listing and you learn over time. And also because we've put a system in place that I'm able to do it very, very easily. And I'll share that with you. So in our world, we call it new potential listing. Okay. Just very simple, new potential listing. When an address comes to me, if it's somebody I I saw at the grocery store that says, Hey, Matthew, we've been, we've been thinking about selling. We'll be in touch. Okay. From that point forward, or somebody texts me or somebody's on our social media or whatever. When I find out an address that I'm going to be working with those people to possibly go on a listing appointment, I send that address to an email address that I have set up in PL, new potential listing at hanksrealtygroup.com. Now, why would I do that? Well, I have a team member, he's in the Philippines, and he's got a list of what he does for every single time he gets that email. So NPL goes to him, it goes to me, everybody on our team can use that. And there is a long list of what he does whenever he sees an address, hit that email address, new potential listing, okay? And I'm gonna share with you some of what we would research just off of an address. Now the basics, are there. Of course, we're going into the tax records. Of course, we're doing that to see where it is, but we're going to pull. I'll give you an example. I'm not going to share the address because I got a listing appointment here tonight. Anybody sharing in in my market here? I don't want to compete with you on this, but by providing the address to my assistant and the system we've put in place, he has gone on and researched every time that property has been in MLS in the past. I've got the full data sheets from every single time. He's gone on and looked, is it city water, city sewer, septic? Is there a septic inspection on record there? What are the school assignments? What are the CCRs in that neighborhood? He's pulled the tax card for that property to include if any portion of the property is in a tax plane, I mean a uh, flood plane, so he can go on the FEMA website and check the address. Uh, The deed from when they bought, the deed from do they have a mortgage on the property, He has gone on Google with that address and done a screenshot of that property so that I can see it in my mind before I actually get there and do some research that way. Uh, As realtors, we have access to the RPR, the Realtor Property Resource. So in in terms of the data that's there, it's surprising what's in that report. And all it is is just logging in, putting the address, and it'll spit out one of about 10 or 12 different reports on every single address just about that you can come up with. The school assignment screenshot, the uh, Google view screenshot, the RPR sellers report, all the at times it's been in MLS in the past. The Zillow screenshot, going to put that address into Zillow and what pops up on Zillow, including this estimate. Uh, often it'll, time, it'll show when the last time that property sold. This is all the information that is just publicly available. It's not, inf- I don't have to ask the seller about anything. I don't have to, you know, pay to access any of this information. It's just with this address, and you put that system in place one time with whoever's assisting you in the business, if you don't have an assistant, that would be one of the first moves you would, you should make, um, in growing the business is put your SOP in place of how you handle preparation for a listing appointment. And as soon as you put the system in place and they watch you do it once or twice, they should be able to do it from there. Let me pause. That's a guy just threw out a lot of information. It seems like every time I host one of these power huddles, we get to the bottom of the hour and I've covered just a fraction of what I wanted to say. And I feel like, wait, wait, this should be a full day workshop. There's so much more I want to share and we don't get there. So I'm trying to kind of cover a good bit of information, but do it quickly. Uh, Debbie has a hand up. Debbie, question. On the RPR um, reports, which reports do you pull? Because there's, you know, as you know, there's probably a dozen or so that you can pull from. So which ones do you look at prior to the listing? So there's a seller's report and a property report are the two I look at. And one of them will generally go like 60, 70, 80 pages. Okay. I don't need that much. I don't want that much. Okay. 
So what I do is, what I like to do is the one that shows the, you know, you have your Zestimate, the automated valuation tool, it just throws out a number. RPR does the same thing and it'll give you the number of stars as to how confident it is in that number. If it's in a home and and they're able to pull homes in that community, I mean, I don't know how they come up with the confidence score, but I'm assuming if it's a cookie cutter type neighborhood and you put an address in and they're they can come up with three comps that direction and three comps this direction that are all approximately the same size in the past six months. That's a high confidence. You'll have a five star. Um, but the go until you get down to the page that shows the estimated value. I use that strategically when talking to them. And maybe the page where it gets into the comps of how what comps did they look at? And I stop right there. I have gone an extra step with my assistant and said, find me a tool, find us a tool where you can combine PDFs. And so I got a full list of all those PDFs. They're all, um, we have a standard naming convention, dash the address of all those PDFs. I just read down the list of what we have. And then he will take them all and combine them into one. So that if I'm in a rush, I can hit print on one PDF, print front to back, and I'm out the door. I just grab my CMA, my standard listing packet, and what he put together, and I'm out the door for a listing appointment. I can do two, three, four a day, and I'm good to go. So um, when I, and I mentioned that because on the PDF where it's all uh, documents needed, I don't want 80 pages of RPR. Just give me the first 10. And so he knows, go down this far, break that also as a separate PDF, and then put it in this order, all in one PDF, so that I can open it, press print, and I'm out the door. Yeah, because some of those charts are kind of like, whoa. Yeah, and it, it'll get confusing. And there are times, though, strategically that you might want that because when people feel like they kind of know already what they're talking about with the market, fire over a report like that and their mind will be so wrapped up that they need you to come in and interpret it. They've got all the data in the world, but they it, it, it it's almost counterproductive to look further into it because they're more confused after looking at those charts than you are you know, as a professional. So that there are times where that's what you want. Right. You, you, you don't want them to, you know, you don't want to go in the appointment and they've got this whole big real estate game figured out. They, they just, you know, that's where they just feel like they just want to be an MLS or whatever. If that's what you want, then hire somebody to just put your home on MLS. If you want me as a professional to guide you through this, you need interpretation as to what does that mean and how does it affect us right now in your situation? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Other questions, concerns, just speak out or raise a hand or whatever. Yeah, Matthew, I got a quick question. Uh, sure. DA in the Philippines, uh, what did it take for you to narrow down and get a good person as a, as a VA? How did you find that? Man, I, I lucked out. I, I got a call one time. This is not a company that came to me by referral or anything. Um, let me hold on and I'll tell you the name of the company if I can find it. But I, I got a call. I got a call out of the blue. Would you Would you need any help with admin? You know, is there anything that you could use some assistance with? Yeah. And they threw out, they, yeah, they threw out a dollars per hour. And I said, and, and I, and at the moment it was the perfect time for me because I just had an admin on my team that I was paying a, a number that I felt like was quite generous, but just where she was, it need, she needed a little more. And I'm like, I, I need the help. Yes, I do. And so the way I did it was I said, okay, give me for the next couple of weeks, give me four hours a day just four hours a day. I'm happy to break that off and I'll pay that. And I started, uh, my, uh, my, uh, assistant's name is Brian. And I started Brian with just menial task. Okay. The most simple task that, you know, I've got a fourth grader in my family. I could have given it to my fourth grader, just very simple, you know, that, and see how he did with it. And he was remarkably advanced. And I mean, I told him one time he did it. He did it exactly how I told him and he had it on his list and he would do it every day. And I was amazed. And if you work for me and I give you a task and you do it and you do it well and you do it consistently and I can lean on you, then I'm going to give you more to do. And that's the way we've done. And so now we have three. So because I went back to the person that called me and said, you need help. She was the one that sourced them. And then now I've got another one and I've got another one. Now we've got three. And I'll show you a graphic. You have three VAs. Correct. How how comfortable are you with... uh with security with 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 these folks really well i i didn't we didn't i didn't start there okay i i didn't start there they had to earn that that trust right and so, there there are pieces of the puzzle that they they don't have access to and they will never have access to you know there's pieces of the puzzle of that but you don't gain my trust easily 
and I'm generally a pretty good judge of character. And I, if I have, if, if I've got that gut instinct that you're taking advantage of me or you're trying to screw me over, then you're out. And I've never had that feeling. Okay. That's great. I'd be curious to know, you know, what that company is. Uh, uh, if you've got a good, good so results. I, I, my contact is, I put my name, Matthew Hanks, and then I put .com. Cause if you just go to MatthewHanks.com, it is my link tree. It gives you all my ways that you can connect with me. Connect with me offline if you would. All right. Happy to do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I'm sorry, where'd you put your contact info? Because I don't, I don't see... Matthew, my name is Matthew Hanks. Just go to the web, go to MatthewHanks.com, and it's going to give you basically every possible way to connect with me on social media or whatever else. Okay, got it. Of course. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. Okay, now, connecting with the client. So you know the property, you've done all your research on the property, and we're still talking before you even get to the listing appointment. This is how we end up running out of time, because we're halfway through our time. And... Uh, I got a whole bunch more I could share about listing appointments, but the client, please find them on social, research them. What, how do they work? How are they wired? Can you have a conversation with them and get a feel for their personality type? Are they the amiable type? Are they a driver personality? Are they, if, if you hear that they're in engineering or they're in accounting or whatever, you better come with your facts and your figures and you know, how the property compares dollars per square foot, days on market, all that type of thing, you know? If you find out that they're an artist or um, a musician or something along those lines, you're probably t you want to talk in terms of stories and pictures and you know be be ready to sit and chat for a couple of hours and you haven't even talked about the house yet. Those types of things you're just dealing with different personalities, but it is really good to know that before you go in. So just be ready for that. I'm going to watch for a hand to go up or you guys speak out. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep moving forward. Okay, arriving to the house. So I did a lot of training early in my career, a lot about what to do. I'm going to tell you, there are people that have uh, logos all over their car, those types of things. There are plenty of times I've been on appointments and the sellers did not care for that. They do not want the whole neighborhood knowing that they're talking to brokers and they're considering a move and stuff like that. So I used to have that. And I have since removed that from a vehicle and try to be a little more incognito. Okay. It could be an ins I could be an insurance or whatever else. Um, so just in terms of arriving to the property, uh, I generally will take somebody on my team with me. And that is most often my wife because she is my stager. And whenever they sign the listing agreement, she is the very next appointment, just her at the house to work with them about what needs to happen in that property. If it is not her, uh, last week I had an appointment with a team member, Nicole. Tonight I have an appointment, or tomorrow I have an appointment with my team member, Craig. And it is very often where the two of us will go. There's very positive things that can come of that. Two people, you know, two different sets of eyes on the situation like that. There are other times it can work against you. If you have somebody you go, you need to make sure you're clear. Who does what? Who says what? At what point am I going to stop talking and you're going to stop talking? When the seller looks at this other person you brought with you and says, well, how are you involved? Why are you here? Whatever. Make sure you you're prepared for that. Okay. Because there's been times in the past that we're not prepared for it. Um, and Susan, my wife, it took us several appointments before we were really there in terms of let me do what I do. And then I'm going to take the ball and I'm going to put it in your court. And she's going to then describe what it is that she does. She's got a big canvas bag that she ordered and it's like Mary Poppins. She starts pulling stuff out of the bag that are staging items. Coffee mugs with our logo. We have our own towels with our logo. We're working on getting garden flags for the front of the house with our logo. You know, we're trying to brand this property to take it from the home that they live in every day to a product that the market is going to respond to. You know, if you can imagine a BMW car, if you take that badge off the front of it and the back of it, it looks quite generic as opposed to when you put that badge on, that's the reason why in a lot of cases, somebody's willing to pay that top dollar because of the logo, because of the brand. You know, it's a, it's a process. We've worked really hard to say when we put Hank's Realty Group on a property, there's a certain something that you can count on and it means something. So when she starts describing that about these are some of the items like like for instance, we have these foam boards and I'm able to print on uh, these are, this is a tabloid size, legal size or um, ledger size. My stupid zoom settings are set that you can't see it, but um, we can print on ledger 
and then put on this foam board with this because you peel off the sticky and it goes on there and we do a, a stand up and just some really nice visuals like that go a long way to be able to show this is what we do to market your property when you put your house on the market you're competing with every other house out there and oh by the way new construction and often when it's new construction those builders are dropping big dollars on staging and marketing and financing and incentives and how wanting their model home to show the best that it can and that's what your potential buyers are seeing before they come to your house so let's compete. If we're going to compete, let's compete. Questions on that? Photos. I always take photos. I put my phone in wide angle mode. I hold my phone where I can snap photos left and right. I ask their permission before I do it. I make sure they understand these are not the photos that are going to go as part of your marketing your home. This is for our record so that when I get back to the house and to the office and I've seen five properties today, I don't miss any details about your property. I can't tell you how helpful that is. And I did I went a long time without doing that. But when I get to the house, I, I'm, I make sure I'm there five to 10 minutes early before I go to the door. I'm standing out front because what are they doing? They're inside looking out the peeking through the blinds out the window. Hey, is Matthew here yet? What's going on? And when they see me out there with a notepad and I'm taking notes and taking pictures and I'm researching and I'm, and I'm pointing at my partner like, hey, we got some rot right here and we got you know, it, it, the, the whole thing, right? They're, they're watching. It's all part of the job interview. If you're about to interview somebody for a position at a, at a company and they show up late, they come in 80 miles an hour into the parking lot, you know, all these things, they're, you're watching all that. So it's very important you're coming. They're about to trust you with this huge endeavor. So that's all just part of arriving to the property. When I get to the house and I knock on the door and we exchange the pleasantries, I always take off my shoes as a sign of respect to make sure I'm not bringing mud in, to let them know that I'm treating their property as good or better than they would. Um, always. I always do that. Um, ne never would I walk through their home with my shoes on. Never would do that. And I always make sure to have socks, too, because I'm not going to be walking around their house in bare feet, okay? Uh, updates. As we're walking through, I never sit down to talk details until I've seen the house. I've already researched it. Uh, I've already been to the house, and I've looked at the exterior. had not been in the backyard yet, but I've got a pretty good idea. Before you get to that house, you should have a range of value that this house is going to sell for between this and this. i got to get there and see what condition we're in to decide are we on the low end or the high range. But you should be able to, with your knowledge of the market, your knowledge of that neighborhood, and what you can find out about that home. What did it sell for last? How long have they been there? What did the house down the street sell for? How much? How many homes are on the market that are like that? You should know, I'm walking into this house, and we're going to be between 450 and 500. If it's in rough shape and needs carpet, needs paint, needs the floors to be re if it needs all that, we're probably 450-ish. But if it's move in ready and they've done the updates and all, we're should be at 500. But you should have that range in your mind before you go because it's really just dependent on condition and what you find when you get there. Um, do, don't feel like you're ready for the appointment until you have that, that in your mind is where you are on the range. That will really prepare you to feel confident and prepared going into the appointment. And that's, this is all before you even get there. Okay. Um, the photos, when I talked about the structure of new potential listing and how we do it the same every single time for every address, he creates a folder in there. The name of the folder is pictures from listing appointment. So when I walk out of the listing appointment, I got all of those photos on my phone and I go to the folder because it's already there. He created it. And I just, we, we do, we use OneDrive, but you can use Google drive or Dropbox or whatever. And I upload those photos for every property. So if it's six months between the time I met with them and I and they're and they're circle back around and they're ready to talk. I don't have to go back through my phone or or try to guess what I can go right back to the folder structure, see the photos I took while I was there, and know what I'm talking about whenever they call. Really straightforward process. Okay. While we're walking through the house, if I have anybody with me, if it's a partner agent or my wife as a stager, you better have your notebook out, and you better be taking notes because it irks me terribly. For, for one of our clients to have to say something twice. If they tell you how old the water heater is or who did the deck on the back or who keeps up with the lawn and landscape, you need that information at some point in the journey. You don't want to have to go back and ask them again. 
Because as soon as you ask again, you know what that shows? You weren't paying attention the first time or you didn't care enough about what they're talking about to write it down. Write it down. Take notes. And that's part of the benefit of taking somebody with you. Um, I, you know, I've had to be very upfront with some of the agents I've trained in the past. Like when we go on the appointment, I do the talking. You're there, but you're there to, for this reason. Other than that, I need you with a notebook out and taking notes so that we can get back on the same page afterwards. Um, try to read my rights as or my writing as to what we were talking about next. Oh, um, improvements. I'm always asking them what updates, what improvements have they done since they've been there? Because like I say, I've already know what they bought it for. I'm trying to determine inside the range. What, what, where is the current market value and then personality? Because as they're walking through the house, um, and telling you about what they've done, you're going to pick up on what they've done. You know, if it's an engineer in accounting, they're leading with how long a project took or how much did it cost to do certain things. It, it's all about the numbers. Other people, it's all about, hey, this is where my grandkids sleep and stuff. Okay, well, now I, I get a feel for what direction I need to go when we sit at the table. Next thing, I got four minutes left to sit down. It After you tour the house, after you've taken the notes, now we're going to sit down at the table. Always the breakfast area. The formal dining is too formal. The living room is too informal. You need to sit at the breakfast table. It's quaint. It's connected. It's about the business. Move the stuff out of the way and sit at the breakfast table. That's where you want to be. Okay. I always sit down and I, if I didn't already ask it or know it, I say, what is most important about this process to you? If you have somewhere you have to be in 30 days, I need to know that. And everything I'm about to tell is about that. If it's about the terrible, horrible experience you had, I just went on one on Sunday afternoon. I try not to work Sundays, but I did Sunday afternoon and I sat down and from the time we sat down, they were talking about how the experience with their last agent, they lost money on due diligence on the home they were trying to have. And it was all about that. I want to know what's important to them because I'm about to tailor my presentation to them and their situation and their goals. That's why it's hard to, to say no to the proposition that I put in front of them about putting their home on the market because if somebody that's highly motivated, extremely professional, caring, courteous, experienced, every I got every tool in the tool bag available to me. I've been, you know, and I sit in their home respectfully, showed up on time to respect their time. We set up an appointment at a time that works for them. I hear exactly, I ask the questions to know exactly what are their concerns, what's important to them, what what are their fears and apprehensions about selling that. I know all that, and then I propose a solution. This is what our game plan is going to be. That's very hard to say no to. That's very hard to say. And I'll tell you what I don't do. Back when I started out, I was I tried to find the slickest PowerPoint and printouts and all. Zero of that. I have not used a PowerPoint or zero. I to me that would be if somebody showed up at my house and and they they pull out something they want to show me a PowerPoint. I would shut that down very quick. I That would be the last thing I would want if I was the owner of that home. I don't care about your days on market. I don't care about any of that nonsense. What I want to know is, do you see me in the situation that I'm in? Do you care enough about me and my family to be concerned with what I'm concerned with? And are you competent to get the job done? Which is demonstrated by the experience over and over and over. When it comes to commission, I try to, at some point, bring that up before they do, because they, it's going to come up. And as I'm describing the process or how things go out, I say, I'll just throw it out there. This is what we charge. It includes the agent that represents the buyer. And I move right on because when we get to the point of the, the, when I end the presentation, the presentation is basically me laying out the game plan of what we're about to do based on what you've told me is your goal. I think this would be an appropriate date for our open house. We're going to hold all showings until then. We're going to be coming soon until then. During the coming soon time, we're going to have the home measured. My wife, Susan, is going to come and meet with you. Actually, let me show you a graphic real quick because this will tie it all together. Everybody see the screen that I'm sharing right now? It shows the skyway to a smooth flight. Can everybody see that? Okay, good. It's, screen sharing is working. As I'm describing what the process is going to look like, this is the graphic that I mentioned having three people to help me in the Philippines. Brian, Form, and Stephanie are all in the Philippines. 
form as our social media specialist, but she does these graphics like this. So I told her, I, I'm a pilot. I, I flew helicopters in the army. So I like a process and I like the idea of tying, uh, like our logo, the circle with the H we got that because first of all, Hank's the first letter in Hank's and it's kind of iconic, but it's also, it looks like a helipad. So there's an aviation tie there because I'm a pilot. So I say, Hey, I'm the captain, captain of the, fl- of the plane. I was a captain in the army. I'm going to be the captain of the ship through this journey for you. Okay. And I describe to them, see the, the sky background with the clouds. It's the sky way for a smooth flight. And if I compare selling the home to a flight you're about to take, a lot of this starts making sense because there's certain things you need to do before you get to the airport about your flight. Then you check in, then you get on the plane, then you, you know, all that. And our process is very similar. So if they tell me they want to sell, I say, here's the date we'd like to do the open house. Before we get to that, there's work we need to do. This is going to be our photo day. This is going to be the day that Susan comes and meets with you about the staging. We, we always recommend a pre-inspection to have the inspector in. So there's no questions about what might be found during the buyer's due diligence period. They're going to come and measure the home. These are the people we'd recommend. We always recommend a professional clean. I, I would rather a home be overpriced than do an open house and a dirty house. Always recommend. I, I'll pay for it myself if I have to. A professional clean, a pre-inspection. You know, Susan could easily be a professional stager. So it's been professionally staged, professionally photographed. I create a video on every single one. And I just say, this is what we're going to do. It tells the story. I'm the team captain. My wife is the next step about the staging. Mr. Wayne, our gopher, he's the one that installs the signs. You see the vehicle there in the background. That's our company vehicle. He drives that thing around every day and puts out all of our signs. I have the big six foot sign. It's got a solar light on the top. Uh, We've tried a lot of different signs over the years, but it's really nice. It lights up at night. And then I say, then we're going to hit social media. Then you're going to hear from Brian every week with what marketing we've done on your property. Then we have agents in the community. These are two that are on our team, Craig and Katie. And then once we find a buyer, your file, your property, your transaction goes to our closing department. And Nicole is the head of our closing department. So she's going to watch and manage every detail from the time we go under contract with a buyer until you give give up the keys of your property, be that closing day or seller possession, whatever it might be. And then Stephanie is represented, though, because she manages. uh, We have a division of our company where we put these big, massive happy birthday signs out in people's yards. We have certain communities that we sell so many houses. We do it for free or on or next to free and it helps us as a thank you to the community and meeting new people and all and i tell them i say we're going to stay in touch where we're going to you know we do movie nights where we invite people out i rent the whole theater out we give away pies at thanksgiving we're going to wish you a happy birthday every year we're going to stay in touch so i i left it the graphic where the little dotted line there continues on into infinity because that's, I I tell them we are going to, this is the first transaction we're going to have of many. I just closed yesterday on a house and it was her fifth transaction that she's, she's, she's worked with us on fifth. It's really hard to gain a client. Once you make them happy and they trust you and you stay in touch, why would they go anywhere else? And that was the fifth transaction we've had. And Oh, by the way, every deal has been bigger. We started small about four years ago, and we are probably four times purchase price now because that's just how things go. I need another about three hours to cover the rest of the material that I had. I want to pause because Jesse always says if you, there's no reason you have to do a hard stop at the bottom of the hour. Um, questions, concerns, raise a hand. I'm going to cover a few more things before we end. Yes. I think this is fantastic. I hope everybody's taking strong, strong notes on this. It's just fantastic. If you don't mind me asking, uh, how many houses a, a year are you selling on average these days? I think we did 54 last year was the number. But I am, um, we formally, we have been a small team. We've been a medium-sized team. We ran a large team. And as of now, I'm primarily doing the selling. I've, you see the whole team there. They help me, but I'm primarily the one that puts them under contract. People say, well, how do you do the social? I, I don't do the social media. This person does the social media. Well, how do you do the, how do your houses look so perfect? You know, that's a lot of, yeah, well, my wife does that. 
okay, well, how do you, how do you have all this stuff for the open houses? And you, you know, you, because I got help. Yeah, I, I do. I do one open house and I, th- this is how we should do our open houses. And then I hand it off to the team member. So, um, I mean, frankly, I could not afford American workers. And so that's why I have multiple workers in the Philippines, because now I found a team that can do what I need done and I can afford it. And that's how we've grown out. And you've got two other agents on your team. Are you, you're not working with any buyers yourself at this point, correct? I do a handful of buyers. If it feels more cumbersome to hand them off, let's say, then I'll work with them. Or if they're in a certain price point where financially it doesn't make sense just to hand them to somebody else, then I will. But it's only a handful of folks. Primarily, it's it's sellers. You, that's you yourself. And then those two other agents on your team, they're working with, with, with your buyers for you? Sometimes, and but they also are both employed full-time elsewhere. And so real estate is not a primary focus. And so all the support and the structure and the systems of a team help them to do what really needs to be done for the clients to be cared for at a high level, even if they only do two or three transactions a year. And I'm I'm close personal friends with the agent. I don't go recruit other agents to be a part of my team. Now that that has not worked well for me in the past. So the people that are with me, they understand this is this is my life's work. This is my passion. This is my focus. I do this isn't a hobby. I take it very seriously. They understand that and they're on board with it. So really great stuff. Um. A couple of quick sales tips, just as a FYI, I try to be sure to listen more than I talk. I have found that one of the greatest sales tips is to ask the right questions. And so I attempt to do that. I like to tell stories. If somebody asks a question, I can oftentimes answer the question with a story, either my personal experience in the past or something I've heard happen to another agent or whatever. Like, well, that, you know, that's an interesting thought. You know, we, we could go with that. As an example, we could go with that number you're suggesting there, even though all the comps say here, we could go with that. But let me tell you what I found. You know, yeah, I I can see where you would feel that way. And I have found this. And let me tell you what's happened when we've tried that in the past. Oh, yeah, you're right. We can skip over the pre-inspection, but let me tell you what could happen if we do and and tell a couple of stories. And like, well, now, how much was that pre-inspection again? I'm like, we can get it done for about 400 bucks. Okay, well, go ahead and do that. Um, We handle all of our paperwork electronically. I'm not sure that's something I would recommend because, you know, because I don't do it at the table. Some people would say, look, if they're ready to sign, don't leave the table until they sign. I I don't feel that way. If they don't want to work with me just as bad when they get that DocuSign package as they did when we were sitting there at the table, I got other options. I got other people I'll work with. Go work with somebody else. So that's how I feel about it. Um. So everything's electronic with the exception of the disclosure document. I have never found that to be a document that's easy to do electronically. So I leave that there. Um, I have put together, this is the packet. People say, well, what do you carry with you into the house? If you don't do a PowerPoint or whatever, this is the packet. It's a two sided. um, Hold on. I'm going to get rid of this background. Now you see what a mess my office is. Here's my packet that I carry in. It's got our logo on the front. Black, nice and clean, classy. I've got coupons inside. I love to either leave a gift with them or give them these coupons. This is to a local bakery. We had these custom made so that I'm, you know, we love to give, give, give. So I carry at least two of those. If I find out they have kids, I'll carry more than two because you don't want to carry your kids to the bakery and only two of them get a cupcake. That ain't going to work. On this side, on the right side is the paperwork that they're going to sign electronically whenever they list. But there are people that if you send them a package and just ask for their signature, that's that's off-putting to them. I want to give them the opportunity to hold it, feel it, touch it, read it prior to the package. So I tell them, like, look, I'm going to send you a DocuSign package. It's very straightforward. Click, 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 and we're good to go. But if you like to read every word, some people are that wired that way then here it is and have at it. Stay up late, turn on some, you know, get you a cup of coffee, whatever you need to do and read through it. Cause when it comes, sign it so we can get started. Um, seemed like there was something else I was going to say about the DocuSign package, but I think that's pretty much it. 
Um, but on this side, I, I typically will take the time because a lot of times they'll say, Matthew, that all sounds great. Oh, well, I know what I was going to say about the paperwork. I always use the line. A lot of folks consider I'm the reason why they don't have to read the paperwork because if they had to do all this on their own, they don't want to. Like some people consider it, Matthew, I'm hiring you so that I don't have to go through all that nonsense of paperwork because trust me, I've read it. I know what it means. Um, do you ever use core present? Never heard of core present. I have a VA is looking for work. If you ever like the interviewer. Awesome. Uh, MatthewHanks.com. Yep. That'd be the way to connect with me. And Debbie says, great information. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Core present is the, the system in KV core that you can do CMAs. And it was back when you were doing the RPR information, when you were talking about that, that I asked that, um, yeah. it, it provides some really great slides as well. Yeah. Um, I would be happy. I'm, I'm always open to different ways of doing things and different ideas. I'm, I'm down with that. Okay. Um, I just don't want to sit there and have some type of canned approach to my client's needs because everybody, even if it seems carbon copy, it's not. There are intricacies and details about every scenario you sit. Let me tell you another secret weapon. Let me see if I have them right here. Get you a set of readers. Now, I'm I'm 46, okay? It's only last year that I needed readers. Get you a set of readers. I don't care if it, it does absolutely nothing, if it's just the kind that don't do anything, just glass, you know? You, the, to sit there and have the readers, that is a secret weapon, okay? When it comes to, they ask about something and you're like, you know, that's an excellent point. You, and you got the reader, look how studious. Look, look how professional, are you, are you gonna doubt somebody that's a professional that puts the readers on? That's a secret weapon, okay? Go definitely go with the readers. All right. Often we get. I'm I'm going to keep going for a couple extra minutes. I got one more thing I'm going to share. Okay, just one more thing. I tell people we have great reviews on our website and on our social media, which we do. We have hundreds, but I don't trust that they're going to go there and look. So I've I've had form my assistant put together a back and front of reviews. This is what our clients are saying. So don't, if you say, Hey, you doubt me in some way, whatever, don't take my word for it. Look, th these are all folks that sat where you're sitting and had to make a decision on who to call. I had one last year. The guy told me when he called and wanted an interview, he said, I am going to interview three agents and make a decision who to call. I said, no problem. But I had somebody give me a tip early in my career. Said, if you're ever in that scenario, you want to go last. And so I used that tip about going last previously. And you know what? It burned me because there were good people that went ahead of me and talked them into signing before I even had the opportunity. So I flipped the script. I asked, can I go first? And he said, no problem. That'd be fine. Let's let you go first. I went in with Susan. I did the whole thing. Like I just described, he called me later in the day and said, we've called off the other two people. We want to go with you. Okay. I ha I tell that story often because that is legit what happened. And I want people, if they're thinking any other body else to interview, that's what I want them thinking. I also, you know, you were asking about how many homes we sold last year. I got it backwards. I said, I think I told you 54 just now or 55. It was 46. And I have them all listed out right here on this paper. It says home sold by Hanks Realty Group in 2023. So if they doubt if they if they doubt have any doubts towards the experience they're going to have with us, read this document because that's what other people say. If you have any experience about uh, are we active in the market, can we get the job done? Okay, well then look at this paper because it tells all the, the these are all the homes we've sold. Last thing I'll share, and then I'll end the call. Definitely the long, longest power huddle that I've ever done. Oftentimes they'll say, Matthew, I hear all this stuff that you're going to do and you're going to manage. Oh, what what do you need from us? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because we put this document together once upon a time and it says client homework. I'm glad you asked what we need because this is a whole big overwhelming thing. And if, if you can just take this right here and do these things for us, that's all we need. We'll take it from there. Number one, prep the property. We can't do it for you. Susan is going to come in and tell you this is what needs to happen. And we need your involvement there. We need you to be committed. We need you to be dedicated. So I need your help with that. Property disclosures. I literally can't sell the house until you fit, finish them. Property disclosures. So I have them printed out here. 
We got a paper where they fill out the utility providers, makes it very easy to get things transferred over to the new buyer. Information about their home, I asked for their help. You were probably provided information about how the home was marketed, things you found out about it when you bought it. If you've had a reappraisal done or a refinance done since you've owned it, you've probably got an appraisal on file. Please bring me that. All of that will help us. You know, what is the name of the granite? What did they call this floor plan when you bought it? Who was the one that installed the roof? And what was the name of those shingles? Do you have any extra paint from when you painted the house that's sitting away somewhere, extra tile? Please help us with that stuff. All that stuff helps us. Um, the Showing Time app, we have found that to be the easiest way to approve appointments. So I just tell, here's the app you need. Please go ahead and get that on your phone and be ready to go. Questions and answer about home inspections, because that's a required document. When they sign the listing agreement, they're acknowledging they've received that document. So I like to go ahead and give it to them. I put together what's called, I call the stay versus go worksheet because it's complicated sometimes. When we sell the house, what should stay? What's a fixture and should stay? And what do I take with me? And so I listed out everything that could possibly be a question. And I put an X in the column. Does it stay or does it go? So if there's any question, we do this every day. We understand these things, but the client doesn't. The, the client doesn't understand that all the appliances stay, but the refrigerator is negotiable. The microwave should stay, but the washer can go. You know, uh, what about it? It's got an alarm. So I've, we fought that battle so many times. I said, let's just put something together to maybe help clarify things. And the very last thing in the packet, and I'll say the last thing about our power huddle today is I tell them, what is it that I need from you? I need you to be ready for your offer because it's on the way. And they say, what do you mean by that? And I say, well, in North Carolina, these are the terms of the offer to purchase. It's about 16, 17 pages worth of paperwork. But when the offer comes in, time is of the essence. I don't have time for you to read through 17 pages. Then I need to be able to call you with an offer and say, here's the price. Here's the deposits. Here's the financing. You know, here's the dates. Are we in or are we out? What are you going to do? And I need you to be ready. And these are the terms. And I talk through it. There's a refundable deposit. There's a non-refundable deposit. And they're like, wow, you know, this, this team seems like they're rare to go. We're already talking about offers coming in. And that's it. No PowerPoint. No big fancy name. None of that. I hope this was helpful to somebody out there. Um, there's a lot of information here, but Jesse and his system, we've got everything recorded and categorized. You can go back and refer to it later. Um, questions? Thoughts? I've done other power huddles where we talked about the importance of getting listings and some of the things that you might do to help you get listings, things like that. But that wasn't really the topic of today. This is like the actual listing appointment, things to think about and do and, and don't do. I tell you what, I'll end with one kind of a funny, embarrassing moment story. Okay. Early in my career, I've been doing this 21 years. I think I was in my second or third year. I didn't have the big six foot sign like I have now in my own vehicle. I carried all of my signs in my trunk. And I wanted to demonstrate to this guy how confident I was that I was going to get his house sold. And I got out of the car. And before I went in the house, I got my sign out of my trunk and I stuck it in the front yard. And I walked up to the door and rung the doorbell and I had already stuck the sign in the yard and I was there to interview for the listing. And it, it, it ended badly and quickly. Okay. So maybe that's one of those, hey, laugh at my misfortune. And sometimes we learn by what we do and it's easier to learn by what others do and don't do. That wasn't a good plan. So maybe that's something to smile about. Like, I cannot believe he did. I can't. Okay. I can't believe I did that. That was pretty brash back in the day. Okay. Y'all, if I can help in the future, please reach out to me. I gave you the way to connect with me, MatthewHanks.com. Um, Sorry if this is longer than normal, but hopefully there's good information there. I hope you have a, you all have a very fantastic day. Take care. 
If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.